Hey guys, welcome back to Seth's Project. My name is Seth, and I have a big announcement. Um, I had a daughter, and she is already four months old. Um, I haven't you know, made a video in a long time, so uh, I'm finally announcing I have a daughter. And I would love to get her out here and get her on camera, but unfortunately, it is very cold and rainy and winter time, so that's probably not a good idea. But one of these days I'll get her on camera, but I will put some pictures and videos on the screen uh, to show you guys. She is pretty cute. Um, also, a little bit of a sneak peek here on my next project uh, for like my fine furniture stuff, uh, which is the nightstands that I said I was working on. A lot of dovetails. Um, actually got a lot of work done on those nightstands, but unfortunately with a full-time job and now a daughter, I don't have much time to come out here, and that is the unfortunate reality uh, that I am faced with at the moment, so that's kind of why uh, not much is done. But um, I've also been remodeling her room, uh, well, a room in my house, which is now her room, uh, for about, oh gosh, it's been a long time. I think it's been about six months since I kind of ripped everything out and redid that room. Um, and I'm doing some sort of like modern casing with uh, some white ash and stuff like that and doing custom doors and everything like that. I didn't want to record it because I need to get it done because she needs a finished room. Um, so the reason why I'm saying that is because I was using my block plane on some of the casing and uh, I accidentally slipped and hit my plane on the hinge and it dinged my plane and it no longer works like I want to because it leaves a big gouge every time I use it. Uh, which is fine because I have the tools to be able to fix that and also uh, tune up the plane uh, while I'm at it. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk about in this video. Now before we get into actually fixing this plane, I want to say that I don't actually have the right tools to be able to do this. Um, it is coming in the future. I have a little spot down in my basement where there's actually plumbing for a sink and I have fully designed out a sharpening station with a whole bunch of storage and a sink and kind of doing it the right way. Um, but what's also going to be included in that is a, a Tormek grinder so I can grind bevels and stuff like that and a large granite surface plate and that is the key to really doing this properly um, because you want something that you can really reference flat. So the way that I'm gonna do it today is not exactly um, the proper way. It's good enough, especially for something as small as a block plane. Um, it should be fine. I'm actually gonna be using my joiner top, which is flat, um, not very flat compared to a, a granite surface plate, but it will definitely do the job. Uh, I'll also leave a picture or something on the screen of the kind of full design of my sharpening station, which I'm not going to record. Uh, it's it's not really like, you know, my furniture or anything like that. It's just going to be simple like shop style cabinets. It's not going to be anything crazy. And to be honest with you, I really just need to get it done because um, I would like to use it. So uh, I'm not going to record it. It's not really that interesting anyway. Um, also. I am going to rant here. This is, this is going to be my rant. Uh, I think that everybody should know that when you buy a Western hand plane, they are not ready to go out of the box, not even close. Uh, even the higher end ones are not ready to go. And I would prove this if I had a granite surface plate, but I do not. What do I mean by they're not ready to go? Um, First of all, you gotta prepare the blade, which is not a big deal. Um, that's to be expected. You should, um, you should know that the blade needs to be prepared so it's not ready in that aspect. And I would bet everything in my bank account that if you put some sticky back sandpaper on a granite surface plate and you lap the sole, you would instantly be able to tell that the soles are not flat. And if you understand how a plane works, you know, it needs to be plain, and if it's not flat, it's not working properly. It's definitely not doing what you want it to do. And that is what's very disappointing about all the planes just about that you can buy. And you know, this is, this is a little bit of a, a first world problem type of thing because they're definitely good enough out of the box. They're, it, don't get me wrong, they're good enough. 
but they're not flat. Uh, this is a fairly new plane and I just rubbed it on the, the sandpaper and it's, it's just, it's not even close to flat. Um, so from now on, if I get a Western tool or really any hand plane, whether it be a Japanese hand plane or what, um, I will be flattening before I ever even use it because it's just really not usable until then. Well, not for what I want to use it for. So that's my rant over with. Now let's talk about what exactly we are going to be doing. One more thing before we get started. Uh, I wanted to show you guys this. This is a design for a Japanese style uh, metal infill plane that I intend on making in the future. There is a lot that's going to go into this um, and uh, I'll give much more information on that later on. And the reason for it is because I'm not super happy with Western planes and I'm not super happy with Japanese planes. I'll, I would like it in between and well, I'll just make it myself. So the tools that you will be needing are of course, something that you're gonna be flattening, um, some PSA sticky back sandpaper, um, and you're gonna want a more coarse grit to remove some material a little bit faster. I have, uh, um, I think it's one something, 120. I don't know why I can't see it. Uh, so I think it's 120. That's what I'd recommend anyway, is 120. Um, and also some finer, 240, and I think this is less than that, 220. Um, you can go higher than that. Um, and I eventually plan on going higher than that when I actually get my granite surface plate and I can actually do this properly. Um, but this will definitely get you a good working plane. Now, I want to show you uh, something that you really don't want. This is my number six uh, Stanley plane, and I've always been very disappointed with the performance of this plane, and now I understand why. So the most important part that has to be flat on a plane for it to work properly is right in front of the blade. And it makes sense when you think about it because if right in front of the blade is not flat, it will only engage really right in the beginning and right at the end. So um, that was the issue with this plane. As you can tell, I used a Sharpie to kind of mark all over the plane and then flatten it and see where the high or the low spots were. And as you can tell, it is right in front of the blade. That is exactly what you don't want. Um, I don't know how far that is like, you know, pushed down or below flat. Uh, so I don't know how much more work it's gonna take for me to get this flat, but, um, it's gonna probably take me a minute, but that is something I kinda wanted to show you. So if you're having trouble with your hand planes, this might be the reason. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and flatten this little guy here. I'm gonna put my plane here and just see how much I might want. So I might come out to there just to give me some room. So I'll just make a mental note of where I want that to end. I don't think I have anything to cut this with, so I might have to just tear it, which is fine. As I said before, this is a PSA adhesive, so as a pressure sensitive adhesive. I probably should have cleaned this off before I tried to do this. But so to get this to really stick, you have to add pressure, as the name would suggest. So um, and I didn't realize that when I first bought this stuff, so I thought the adhesive really sucked, and I was very disappointed, but then I realized I was just uh, ignorant. So don't make that same mistake. So I'm just gonna bend that back and see if I can't tear this. And that worked out pretty well. Um, so that's what I want right there. Put my tape back, put this out of the way. Now I'm just gonna take, take the backing off here. Try not to get any particles underneath. I probably could have been a little neater with this, but this should be fine. And just lay it down. So, as I said, this is pressure sensitive adhesive, so I'm gonna use a roller. I bought this roller on Amazon for like $10, and it works well. It's really cold in here, so I'm sure that's gonna make this really hard to stick, but we'll get it done here. And I'm just gonna work this in the best I can. I think this adhesive is gonna give me some, some trouble because it's so cold. I hope that makes sense and I'm not just sounding stupid. Ah. Okay. Yeah, this is not sticking like it usually does. 
but since it's so kind of hard to put down, it allows you to sort of flatten everything out before the adhesive kind of comes into play, which is nice. So that way you're not having like a bunch of high spots and stuff like that. Next thing I like to do is take a big Sharpie and go over the entire surface, kind of like this. Just kind of leave some marks right here in front of the blade, most importantly. And just sort of mark over the surface. And this is gonna be a good indicator of kind of where you're at. <laughs> Got a lot of Sharpie, there's a new Sharpie. Um, kind of just go over the surface, get on the sides. <laughs> Not the neatest job ever, but um, it doesn't matter. We're about to sand it off. All right, so now let's get started here. All we're gonna do, I actually sort of wanna wipe a little bit of that off. Nah, screw it. And just get started, see, do a couple strokes and kind of see how flat we are. Um, you can see I'm, I have a bunch of contact here uh, not much in this area, so we'll see how much work I'm going to have to do to get this flat. And uh, something else I want to mention, I'm not putting a lot of downward pressure on this plane because if you put too much downward pressure, you can actually flex the sole, and that is something that you do not want to do. Obviously, if you're trying to flatten it, you don't want to uh, make it out of flat, so um, I'm just kind of sort of letting the weight of the plane, almost like as if I'm using it. Um, but trying to keep everything as uh, flat as I can. So as you can tell, um, all of the Sharpie is being in contact. You can see there's more, there's some places in contact more than others. Like right here is a spot where it might be a little bit low, but I actually am in contact with the sandpaper. Uh, so that is that is good. Now, I'm just going to continue on. A little bit of progress there. Now, something I would recommend is taking some sort of uh, something to kind of unclog the sandpaper, just like that. That way you can have a little bit more life out of your sandpaper. So I'm just going to go here until I get rid of all the Sharpie. This plane must have been pretty far out of flat because it took me three sheets to get this um, nice and even with the scratch pattern and getting rid of all the Sharpie. It took me quite a while actually. Um, I also did the sides to get them nice and flat and get rid of any surface rust. Um, so everything is looking nice and even. Now, something you want to be careful of is you're going to be making a sharp edge here. And whenever you're sanding this, you'll end up rolling a burr down on the bottom. And this is definitely not what you want. So if you are going to be setting the sides in the end, which I would recommend just to get them flat, um, you want to make sure you're doing the bottom last. That way you're not rolling a burr onto the bottom and then scratching the wood whenever you are uh, trying to plane. So that's just a quick little tip. Also, I'll leave the uh, blade in there um, and obviously I don't have it sticking off the bottom. And that's because the lever cap can actually flex the bottom very, very slightly. Um, and you want to make sure that you're flattening, flattening it with the blade in there. Uh, so that's another little tip. Now, in the end, I probably will hit this, these corners with um, the final grit sandpaper, which we're about to go to, which is 220. And uh, that way you're not rolling any burrs and you make sure you don't have any sharp points that you're digging into the wood with. So uh, that's, that's what I'm going to do. Now, whenever you remove your adhesive backed sandpaper, it will leave an adhesive residue on whatever you are using as a means to flatten. And what you want to do is spray it with either isopropyl alcohol or what I would recommend is uh, mineral spirits and uh, get rid of all of the, uh, the adhesive so that way it doesn't get underneath your next uh, next adhesive so or next uh, sandpaper. So that's what I have done. Made sure I got rid of all that extra. And now I'm going to be going on to 
the 3M uh, Stick It uh, sandpaper. This is made by 3M. And the, the other sandpaper that I use is actually made by Klingspore. Um, and there you can see that is the brand name there. And this is a pretty good brand. I'm not a big fan of the adhesive because it really comes off and it's hard to clean. And whenever I get my granite surface plate that's really expensive, that's not going to be enjoyable. So um, kind of first world problems. Now, the reason why I go with clean sports is because it's really hard to find sandpaper that is wide enough for hand planes. And they have six inch wide rolls, which is really nice. Um, and 3M, I think they have it, but it's really hard to find. I'm not sure. Um, I've done quite a bit of research, but it's hard to find this stuff. Um, there's also other means that you could adhere rolls of sandpaper, you know, which is spray adhesive, but I'm not a big fan of that. I don't want to make a mess out of the adhesive. So um, anyway, I'm just going to lay a roll or a, a strip of this 220 down and rip it off there. And now I'm going to replace that 120 grit scratch pattern or that 140 grit scratch pattern with the new 220 grit and I'm going to get my roller and just roll that back down. Making sure I keep everything nice and flat. So this is much thinner or a much more narrow uh, strip. So I'm gonna have to keep it pretty even. So yeah, I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm actually gonna put the marks back on there with the Sharpie and I'm just going to go over it just like I did with the previous grit. I've officially got rid of all of the previous scratch pattern and the Sharpie as well. And as you can tell, that is nice and even. I've also hit the sides as well. Now you can take this all the way up to 2000 grit if you wanted to for a block plane that really isn't meant for a finishing pass. I would not really uh, find the need to do that. Now, something I am gonna do is I'm gonna knock the edges off. So you've gotta be careful here because when you, when you, if you put your plane on a 45 and you do this, you're actually gonna be developing a burr on the side and the bottom. Um, it might be very slight, but it's gonna be there. So in order to remove that burr, I'm gonna to, want to show you right now. So I'm just gonna do a couple strokes in the corner here. Sort of roll the plane a little bit. I wanna round that over. Um, now, I could have rolled a burr on the bottom and the sides, I could have not, but to make sure that it is not there, I'm gonna do one pass on the bottom, one pass on the side, one pass on the side, and just like I said before, you wanna end with the bottom, and there we go. So, this plane is ready to be used again, and we are gonna try it out right now. This blade could definitely use a sharpen, but the plane is working quite nice. Nice little shavings. What's nice about having a, a nice flat sole is you know the results that you're getting is consistent and predictable, which is exactly what you would expect from a tool that you're hoping will work with you and not against you. So I'm leaving a pretty nice polish on this piece of Aspen. And that's even with a blade that probably is a little bit less than sharp. So. Um, Having a flat sole won't uh, fix all your problems, but it might be the cause of some of the problems, which is definitely the case for me. I was having issues with all of my planes and that was actually the reason. So anyway, guys, um, that is the plane. Looks really nice too. looks like brand new. Uh, something else that I would recommend um, now that you got fresh dill, on there that is not treated with any sort of oil. I have some Camellia oil in this little Japanese applicator that I bought on Amazon. And I'll just go over the surface, all the surfaces that I feel like might just rust. I will go over 
and this is the final step of the process. This applicator leaves a little bit more than I would like on, so I wipe it off a little bit. Well, that will conclude this video, and I really hope that you learned something, and I hope that you found this little video useful. It's been a while since I've done a tutorial video, and I just felt like today I would do that since I needed to repair this plane anyway. I thought I might show you guys how I do that and maybe it will help you out. So anyway, uh, can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Um, subscribe if you would like to <laughs> and like the video if you found any use out of it. So anyway, guys, see you later.